Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you so much that we're still in the land of the living, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm asking you right now, Lord Jesus, to have your hedge of protection over us. Bless us in our coming and our going. Have us to be what we need to be, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm asking you right now, Lord Jesus, to bless the Lemon family, Lord. Bless the Chapmans, the Williams, Lord, and bless the Tillers, Lord. Have your hedge of protection over on, on this Sunday. And Lord, protect them throughout the week, Lord. Have your hand upon them, Lord. Grant the desires of their heart. Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here in the land of the living. You know how sometimes we come up here and we go to church and we look at two things. We look at what we want and then we start praying and we try to figure out what God wants. So, and some people in doing so, sometimes they, oh, well, God, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it that way. But I find that if you do it God's way, you'll be all right. They have people in this world, they get frustrated, and they, don't, they get tired of waiting for certain things that they want or they desire in their life. But I'm telling you, if you just let go and let God in your life, things will be all right. You know, even I struggle with people when I request them to do this and do that and they don't do it fast enough or they don't do it at all. And all I got to do, instead of me saying, oh, I'm going to walk away from this situation, I'm going to not deal with it because I keep telling these people what to do and they just don't want to listen. They don't want to do right. They don't want to be right. They, 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 they put on a defensive mechanism that, oh, I'm not going to let this person take me or take control of me. See, but that's why you got it wrong. It's not that person taking control of you. You got to have a, a true relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's got to be God taking control of you. You can't play with this thing. I can't turn this thing around or be influenced by outside entities when God gives you something. When God gives you something, you've got to go ahead and do it. you got to go ahead and do it, even if you don't want to do it. I was reading today, and I was reading this passage of scripture, and I said, Lord, I don't even understand what's going on. I don't even want to do it. But although... I don't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I'm going to do what thus said the Lord. At the end of the day, I can't do what, uh, when I'm in a ministry, I can't do what brother say, a sister, even a wife, or a friend. I got to do what God tell me to do. Because some people, you're going to step on their toes. Some people, they're not going to feel right when you do what you do. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I'm gonna just, we're just gonna do the course. We ain't gonna do no, we're, just, we're gonna talk about the Holy Spirit today. We're gonna try to get the Holy Spirit going in today. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to do right, be right. Holy Spirit, help me to live right. Holy Spirit, help me to be right, to do right. Come on down, Holy Spirit, come on down in this place, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come on down in this place. We need your power. We need your grace and 
your mercy, Holy Spirit, come on down in this place. We need the Lord to think about His Holy Spirit, His His joy that He fills us with. We can't stop living for God. We, we can't stop living for God and, and start living for this world. That's what many of us are doing now. We, we just gave up on God. All the things we said we weren't going to do no more. Now we're starting to do them again. We went through sickness and pain. And even some of us went through disease. And God got us through that. And then now since we got through that. And we feel good, and we're having fun, we think it's all right, and it's not all right. A lot of things are happening in this world today because you think you're all right. But I'm going to tell you, you still need the Lord. Holy Spirit, come in this place. Holy Spirit, fill us again. Lord Jesus, we need your power. We need your grace. We need your glory. Holy Spirit, come on down in this place, Lord Jesus. Fall down on us, Lord Jesus. Fall down on me, Lord. Fall down on me. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help me to walk right. Jesus, help me to talk right, Lord. Help me to do right, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, and I'm asking you right now, Lord Jesus, to, to bless me as the days go by. Holy Spirit, I need you, Holy Spirit. I need your love. I need your joy. And I need you in my heart. That's the only thing that'll keep me is this Holy Spirit, his love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on down on me, Holy Spirit. Come on down on me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Second Kings, the fifth chapter, the twenty-third verse. The twenty-third verse. Second Kings, the fifth chapter. The twenty-third verse. And Neiman said, be, con be content. Take two talents and urge them him. Bound two tablets of silver in two bags with two changes of garment and lay them upon two of his servants. And they bear them before him. The 24th verse. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hands and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. The 25th verse. But when but he went in and stood before his master and Elijah uh, and said unto him, Whence cometh thou? And he said, Jesus. And he said, Thou servants went no whither. Thy servants went no whither. Now, this is two people communicating. The last statement he said, thy servants went no whither. Look that up. I'm going to tell you what that is in a second. The 26th verse. The 26th verse. And he said unto him, went not my heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money, receive garments, olive, uh, olive yards, and vine yards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and maid servants? This is, let me, let me expound. This is the time where everything is being received because they supposedly have done what they was told to do. Let me say that again. These are the things that they're receiving because they supposedly have done what they were supposed to do. Duck. Okay, for all the people, when I said duck, 
and I looked at them, and they didn't duck. Chances are, when all those bullets was flying, and when they were spraying, the people who didn't listen probably got hit. Some of them got hit, some of them didn't. But I didn't have time to run to them, to, to, to put them down or grab them because they were too far away. All I could say is duck. Duck down. Get down on the floor or run. These are the things you say and you expect people to listen right away because the way I said it, I said it in a frantic, in a fearful way, in a hurry way. I expressed myself and I, I looked at them and shocked and I was running towards them. And you, you're going to have some people who look at you and they're going to say, why? They're going to say, why should I duck? Are oh, they gonna say what's going on? How many people in here when I said duck duck? I only saw one person duck. Everybody else just looked at me. Only one person duck. And this person was standing up when they duck. They had other people sitting down. They just looked at me. I said duck. If if I'm standing up, if I'm sitting down, all I know is the king of the castle or the leader of the house, you don't know, hear me, said duck. When the leader of the house or the king of the castle said duck, you need to duck. If the king of the, the castle, the leader of the house said run, you need to run. He don't even have time. A million dollars. You're going to see over 10 acres of land. You're going to receive uh, uh, 15 horses and, and 10 cows. You're going to receive that uh, buildings on the least three building complexes. This is all the things you're going to receive. Now, you didn't know you were going to receive all these things, but if you would have simply did what you were told to do, you would receive all those things. But look what happened. Let's go to the 27 verse. They said the leprosy Therefore, a Neman shall cleave unto thee, and thou seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper, as white as snow. You see, the thing is, you told your servants to do, they ain't go nowhere. That's what this word said. They said, and he said, your servants did not go anywhere. That's in the 25th verse. 25th verse, it said, Now he went and stood before the master, Elijah, and said to him, Where did you go, Gaza? And he said, Your servants did not go anywhere. They didn't go anywhere. We have people today, they're trying to run a household, trying to tell their spouse what to do, trying to tell their children what to do. And so long as the leader, if you would, is around and in that house, you know, hear me? They're doing everything that that leader tell them to do. But when that leader, you know, hear me, goes to work or go out in his journey, everything that he told them to do, they stop doing. He ain't here yet, y'all, so he's gone. We can do what we want. We can live the way we want. We can do anything because he's not here. Because he's not here, we can live the way we want to live. We can do what we want to do and how we want to do it. And everything is not everything when somebody is not there. I could tell you story. <laughs> Where the man told his wife to be faithful. And she wasn't faithful when he left to go on his journey. And one day, he told her, I know you're not being faithful. I'm going to give you a chance. If you want to leave, you can leave. But if you want to stay, you're going to have to stop doing what you're doing. And then all of a sudden, she said, no, no, no. I want to stay because this money is too good. She told him, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to be unfaithful no more. But man, he went out some more. He kept going out and making his money. But one day, he said he's coming back. 
He's coming back, and this time he's coming back with a shotgun. He's going to hide out in the back of the yard and wait. And since he's waiting, and he found out that the guy came in in the back door. As the man came in the back door, he waited. He waited, and then he bust in. He bust in the room, and he said, I thought you said you were going to stop. And she couldn't say a thing. He gave her a chance to say something, but she couldn't say a thing. She was speechless. Not only did he take out her, he took her out first. And then when the man said, well, I didn't know. I didn't know she was married. Is she married? Yeah, I'm the other. Well, I didn't know. The man looked at her. He said, how can you not know? He said, well, I didn't know. You've been here before. You look around. Don't you see men's shoes on the floor? Don't you see men's shoes, uh, uh, men's clothes in the closet? Uh, didn't you see the picture right, still right on my bed? Uh, well, let me tell you something. Even if you didn't know, sorry, and he took him out. Uh, let me tell you something. People every day are being taken out because God had gave you room to repent, and you're not repenting. God had took you through 2020. You don't know hear me? He took you through COVID-19. And you came out that okay. And you came, you skated from that. And then God took you through other things. He took you through not being able to pay your rent. Now you can pay your rent. He took you through the relationship wasn't working. But now it's working. And now all those things, are, and now you have the tendency if it feels good. And I'm having fun. It must be all right. But I'm telling you, one day somebody going to tell you to duck. And you're not going to know what to do. You're not going to know how to duck. You're not going to even know what the word duck means. And you're going to stand up there like a statue. You're going to stand up there like a giraffe. And then that, the, 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 the places that been sprayed, one of them going to hit you. And when it hits you, you're not going to die right away. You still going to have a chance. But people, like I said before, in sermons before, when people are in pain, they're not thinking about repenting. They're not thinking about living right, doing right. They're not even thinking about the Holy Spirit. All they're thinking about is living a good life. And I'm telling you today, you're not living a good life if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in it. You're not living a good life if everything is not everything. And what I mean by that, some people, some of us think we slip. Some of us know the schedule and say, oh, I never get caught. And even if you never get caught, if you never repent, now you have to deal with God. Some people are fortunate enough to deal with people on this earth while they're still alive. They can either live and make the right answers or they can die when they make the wrong answers. They have women today have not lived because they did the wrong answers. How in the world are you going to call a man out his name, call him all kind of names, use profanity in him, talk to him like he's dirt, and this man holding a nine millimeter. You lost your mind. You taking your life away. You ever heard how when people are dealing with people who are mentally unstable, that they go along with the flow until they get themselves an opening to get out of that thing? You've seen it. We always see it on the move. You have this person that's not right. There's something wrong with them. And we see it on the movie how the lady always tells them something wrong with you. You have lost your mind. You so supposed to do that. You cannot tell a person who's a killer that. You just took your life because if, if everything, think about it. If everything you said was true, your chances of survival are slim. Now, if you want to survive, what you're going to do is tell him what he needs to know until you get out and call police. Hello? It's the same way with your life. You need to repent of your sins. The Bible said that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin. You don't want to wage your sin on death. You want to wage your repentance on the glory of God. 
Holy Ghost, come on down. Holy Spirit, come in my life. Lord, give me the things I need to survive. What do people do when they want to accomplish stuff? They work hard at it. Right now, people know, and God has already dealt with you. You need to work hard on reading this word, understanding this word, opening up your mind, being obedient to God. The disease will never come if you believe and trust in God. The 27th verse said, In the leprosy, therefore, of Neman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thee seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. Lord have mercy, Jesus. We have people who are getting tr and in trouble hand over fist. We have people who are manipulative. We have people who are treacherous. We have people who are simply evil. I was reading the story about this professional football player. How he made the first round. I mean, maybe the sixth or seventh round. He was a wide receiver. He's real good at what he do. Catching those balls, making money. And he got caught up with this woman. I think it was the second or third woman he got caught up with. And she told him, as he, as he left the place, and went back to his home, she called him and told him that she was pregnant. He said, well, he didn't want to keep it. And she said, no, she wanted to keep it. So he went down there, was spending time with her. He got a report with her. And let me tell you what this joker did. Man, and this is an evil person. This is what you call an evil person. He told this woman to follow him that they're going to a restaurant or something to eat. Now, as this woman, and this is so sad, as this woman followed him, thinking that, oh, he want to be a family. He loved me. He cared for me. He want to do the right thing. She followed this joker. This joker stopped at a stop sign, and the car that was behind her drove on the side of her and shot five bullets. And she got hit, I think, by three of them. And during this time, they said that this lady drove to somebody's house, called 911, and she told the people, she said, look, I might not make it, but I want y'all to do everything y'all could so my baby could make it, because she was pregnant. She had a child. And during this process, they knew who did it because she was able to call 911 and tell her, her, her you know, her boyfriend, her husband, whatever, was involved. So they arrested him. I believe he spent like 13, 14 years in prison. And he got out. And she, she died. The kid didn't die, but the kid suffered from a disease because his evil act. And it's so sad. I'm telling you today, don't be the person that disobey God. Don't be the person that don't duck. Don't be the person that's manipulative and trying to get over on somebody. Just simply do the right thing because and in the end, it's going to come back to bite you. They said that things you do in secret will come to light. Even, even if you never get caught by the police, it's even, it's better and be arrested and think about what you did whether you lived a long life and died with sin on your conscience or sin in your body. If you die with that thing in you, if you die with that thing, Lord knows it's between you and God now. And everything you did, you're going to be held accountable for it. Some people never want to take the responsibility for things they do in this life. They want to always skate and get over on somebody. They always want these people, they look at people who work hard and they want to work with them so they can do all the work and they can just sit back and drink coffee or smoke their cigar. There are people in this world, they know you're a superstar so they'll let you do all the superstar work and they just skate easily through life and say, I'm making this money, I'm going to do everything so I won't get hurt, I'm going to work as less as I can. But it's going to catch up with you. 
Doing the wrong thing always catch up with you. People talk about, I want to do it the short way. I want to take shortcuts. You can shortcut stuff so much until you don't know what you're doing. And the sad thing is say we have doctors like that. We have doctors who went to medical school. They're taking all these shortcuts until people are dying hand over fist. Because they decided that they didn't want to learn everything in the medical field. That they wanted to take a shortcut to surgery. And because they took a shortcut, they forgot to sew up a vessel. Or they gave them the wrong medicine. Or they left something in the body. And now infection has set in. And then by the time they got to the infection, it was too late. Because either the person, or they bled out hemorrhaging. That's internal bleeding. They either bled out or, or they couldn't take it. Their heart couldn't take it because the surgery was too much for them. But we pray today that everybody that's going through something, God will cover them. That everybody that is, is, is fighting some kind of disease or, or fighting something in their life and they want to get out, we pray that the God will reach out and, and get them, Lord Jesus. Some people who are in sin and been in sin for a long time, they want to get out so bad, but they need somebody to help them or show them the way because they don't know how to get out. I'm telling you, to run out that door right now. To run out that door of sin and go to somebody, a Bible-based church, a preacher that's preaching, and because he loves you, he not just wants your money. He not just want a big church, a mega church, and he uh, uh, passing over people who really need the Lord. Obedience is very important. Sometimes we want to do what we want to do. But I'm telling you today, it's good to do what thus said the Lord. To read his word. To get on your knees and pray and believe and receive his word. Today, we need to repent of our sins and make our faiths. We need to get baptized in the name of Jesus because Jesus can wash us white as snow. He can take all the sins away, not some of them. And if you should see that friend that you've known for 15 years and say, oh, I knew you of this and that, I change. I don't do this and that no more. Oh, man, you can't tell me that. Man, you do. No, I don't. God has delivered me. And you could be delivered too. All you have to do is repent of your sins. You don't keep have to live in the way you live it. You can make a bow face on all the things that you've done and, and, and just lay your burden down. Just lay it down. God will pick it up and he'll make you anew. Believe and trust in his word. And those diseases that you have, the leprosy, the HIV, the venereal disease, the monkeypox, the COVID-19, God will wipe it away. God will wipe your sins away. You have to repent. You have to repent. You got to make a bow face. You got to believe and trust in God. You can't stay in the quicksand. The only way a man can survive out of quicksand is he has to move. He got to put one foot in front of the other. Grab that uh, uh, branch. Grab that log and, and, and struggle and fight for your life. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit in that sin that you're in. Repent from it. Get out of there. Get out of the water. For God is your healer. He can heal you of your disease. He can heal you of your sin because sin is a disease. All you have to do is believe and trust in his word. You got to start doing what God wants you to do. Not what you want to do. You have to step out on faith. Faith is the substance of things. Hope for things unseen. But if you have faith in God, you could rest assured that God will bring you out. He'll save your soul. He'll make you whole. Believe and trust in God. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's waiting for you. Obey his word. Look for him. Look up to the hill where your help comes. Your help coming from the Lord. Stop living in sin.
You still got time. But you don't know when your day is coming. But you gave me confidence. Gotta believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let go, let go. Be obedient. Don't be with them. Be obedient. The passion of my love.